Processing and editing images is an incredibly important part of photography these days and how a photographer works with their image in post-production can make or break it. So John Haswell and I thought it would be fun to process each other's raw files to see how different photographers approach things in different ways. Now I should make this clear, this is by no means a step-by-step -step tutorial. This is more me sharing my thoughts and creative process when I'm editing images. Well, first of all, I'm sending John my raw file. It's an image that I shot in the Lake District at a meetup he organized. Nothing special, just a, an average day, average sunset. Let's see what he can do. So here's my raw file, and this is how I processed it. Thank you very much for that image, Simon. I gladly accept this challenge. Uh, it'll be a great image to work with, and I'm looking forward to doing it. You're not getting away with that easily. I've also taken an image for you to edit, so please have fun with it, and let me see what you've got. <laughs> John loves seascapes, so I'm not surprised I got this. It's a typical image shot on a day with average light conditions, but there's a lot of dynamic range to play with here. Thanks, John. So I decided to process this image two ways. The first is my own personal style, how I would like to see the image look, and I wasn't there to experience the light conditions, but I've been in similar situations, so I've got a, a pretty good idea. The second image is just having a little bit of fun. It's just sort of pushing, pushing things a little bit and creating that what I like to call a millennial Instagram image. That's gonna get some flack. So the question that is often asked is how much processing is too much? And should we be taking a mediocre image and processing it to death to try and make it into something it's not? Well, I don't think there's any harm in processing a mediocre image to try and make it look good. It's good practice, but it's when things start to look a little bit fake, that's when I have a problem and we'll touch on that shortly. Okay, let's begin. I don't have Lightroom, I use Photoshop, but they have the same functionality, although Photoshop has the added benefit of working in layers, and that's what I love to do. So the first thing I want to do is remove the chromatic aberration and adjust the lens profile there. I'm gonna create two images. The first is an exposure for the foreground and the C in the little cove there. I'm just gonna make it a little bit warmer and don't wanna give it too much contrast at this stage. Now, one thing that I really do not like is green. I hate grass and trees. It can look so fake. I don't know why, it's just one of those colors that I like to pull down the greens and increase the yellows a little bit and take the saturation out um, or actually adjust the hues so that we're going from sort of green to a yellow hue. And when I've got areas of grassland, and in this case, lots of sort of straw colored dead grass, I like to make the luminosity a little bit brighter and give it a little bit more punch. It just makes the whole sort of grassland area a little bit more contrasty and more interesting. That's just a personal opinion. And with this image in particular, that bright green corner was just standing out too much. There's not a lot of color in the rest of the image, so we just needed to knock that right back. Okay, so I'm happy with that. So now I'm gonna open up the file again, and this time I'm going to create an exposure for the sky. And this is where we have to be careful not to overdo it. There are three controls that people overuse that contribute to a fake looking image. The first is clarity, second is dehaze, and both of these can create horrible sort of halos and, and fake color. And then the third is shadows. You want to be careful how much you, you open up the shadows, otherwise you can end up with a very flat HDR looking image. For me, I don't like that. I like to have some punch, some contrast with dark and light. Some sh I, I like shadow. Shadow is your friend. Highlights aren't though. Already I've got a halo around the top of that rock outcrop. See if I exaggerate it, how bad that gets. It's surprising how many people push that too far and end up with 
that fake look. Going to give it some warmth. Just got to find the right level there. That looks good. So when I open it in Photoshop, I'm just going to copy and paste that into the lighter file. So now I've got two layers and from there I can start playing. Now the first thing to do is to adjust the curves so that I give the image a bit of punch because it's looking a bit flat. So I'm just going to adjust it ever so slightly to begin with and we can go back and do some more later. That should do that. And then with the sky, really don't need to do too much with that, just ever so slightly probably. Yeah, it's very easy to push skies and make them look a little bit too exaggerated, too fake. I'm creating a very simple graduated mask which mimics uh, a graduated neutral density filter and that's the that's the layer that I'm going to be playing with later. For now I'm going to hide it away. There's a technique I like to use it's luminosity masks. I'm using um, a free plugin called Easy Panel here. Um, it allows you to create a series of masks so that the the darker top image is exposed where we see the lighter areas and where we see the darker areas the image doesn't come through that will just be the background so once we've selected our mask we can just simply paint in to reveal that darker top image so I'm just doing this really really quickly really roughly but you get the idea now there's a couple of areas here around the sea the dark layer was was revealed and we don't really need that we want to keep it light and bright so I'm just going to delete that out and just lighten the sea a little bit to blend the layers better so that is a good a good base from which to play with now if I bring in my if I bring in the layer I created earlier just to darken that sky even more I think this is a good place from which to fine-tune things so I'm just gonna flatten this image what I would normally do is create a second file and flatten it but I'm just gonna flatten this image right now I think it's a little bit too warm overall there's a little bit too much yellow going on so just bringing in a little bit of magenta and blue helps to to cool things down see what a difference that makes but I think for me, the sky is looking dull. It's looking a bit gray. So I'm going to duplicate this image and create one version with uh, more of a bluer sky. Bring up some of that blue. Um, I use color balance for this. And again, just bring up some of the, the cyan and the, and the blue. And now that's looking a little bit more natural, a little bit more how I would imagine John experienced it. But we only want the, the clouds to be like that. So I'm going to create my graduated mask and that's looking good. So let's look at the original file and I did remember to straighten the horizon here now. <laughs> And this is my process file. I also made the chalk cliffs a little brighter and more contrasty and brought up some of the color in the Bay Area in the end. And for fun, here's my millennial Instagram version, which will stand out very nicely on social media. So you may be thinking, oh, I don't want to be inside processing mediocre images to try and make them look good. I'd rather be outside taking good images in the first place. And I would quite agree with you. But the thing is, if we do get that really great image in camera with stunning light and contrast and color, we need to still bring it back and put it in the computer and need to know what to do in the processing stage to optimize that image. And the only way we're gonna know what to do is by spending 
plenty of time practicing on those mediocre images. I hope you found some value in this. Please do comment, let me know what you think. Thanks for watching. And now you've got to go over and check out what John's done with my file. His channel links at the end here. Bye.